didn't give me an intro, so <laughs> I'll just go by memory. I've known Zane probably since he was about six years old, so I could tell lots of things. Well, he's 19 now, that's 13 years. Uh, uh, today we have Zane Richardson, um, Doctor of Physical Therapy, and Mitch Clemens, PTA. They are with Kinetic Physical Therapy here in town. Uh, they are both local. Uh, Zane is a graduate of Pittsburgh High School and yeah, Mitch <laughs> is from New York. So um, they both excellent physical therapists, uh, worked with therapists for a number of years and always think of therapists as just hips and knees and things like that, but there's so much more that they do and that's um, I believe what Zane's going to talk to you about today. So. You've probably surmised the average age of this club, therefore we ask that you use this. <laughs> if I start screaming at you, just let me know. Uh, first off, I just want to thank Ms. Pam for giving us the opportunity to come talk about our business and, and kind of what we do. Um, we get questions constantly about what is physical therapy. Of course, you know, we're therapists. We think everybody knows what therapy is, but that's not the case. So um, it's always nice for us to be able to tell people about it, what we do and what we don't do. Uh, a little bit closer. A little better. That word right there. Uh, as Pam mentioned, I am from Pittsburgh, Texas. Please don't hold it against me. Um, I have some family from here. My grandmother graduated back in the 50s. She was a Reardon. Um, Mitch went to Union Hill. You're welcome to hold that against him if you want to. <laughs> um, but I know he knows a lot of folks here in town. But um, So yeah, I'm, I'm a physical therapist by trade. I went to Pittsburgh High School, and then from there I went to Northeast, got my associates. I uh, finished uh, Baylor in 07 with a bachelor's, and then went to Texas State in San Marcos and got my doctorate in physical therapy. But um, since then, Mitch and I both, we worked in Longview at the Institute for Healthy Living. I was there about five years. Mitch was there six or seven. He had to make sure everything was set up correct so that I could come in and start working. Um, so we've worked together for about that amount of time pretty much consistently. If I had patients that I evaluated, he would help me treat, whether it was uh, an outpatient or in the home health setting. So, um, and here in Gilmer, it's just me and Mitch. So. We worked together consistently for quite a while, and I mean, frankly, couldn't do what I, I do without him, so he's a very big help. So, uh, Miss Pam asked me to talk to you about physical therapy. My first thought was, well, let's just do a bunch of exercises right after lunch. Um, you, can just, you can put your foot down for a minute, and we'll go ahead and start some of that if you are interested. <laughs> if not, you can just listen to me for a few minutes. Um, so, yeah, physical therapy, anybody in here know much about it, had it, been to it? Okay. okay, so we got a couple of folks that have probably been through it a little bit. Um, main things I want to talk to you about today is simply just what it is, uh, who we are, who do we treat, what kind of conditions do we treat. I think there's going to be some things that may surprise you just a little bit that you probably don't think about when you think about therapy. Um, where do we treat the different environments? How are we different? What, what do we do that some folks don't do and what do they do that we may also do or we're not appropriate for? Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about our business because there are certain things that we do with Kinetic PT that uh, might not be appropriate in some of the other settings. It's just a little bit different. So we'll go over that as well. So what is physical therapy? Just a basic definition. Uh, it's care that aims to, to improve pain, uh, decrease pain, and improve function. Uh, treatment of disease, injury, deformity by physical methods. Uh, listed here manual therapy modalities and exercise. These are just some of the things that we do when we see patients. Um, if a therapist ever offers you surgery or drugs, you are not in the hands of a therapist. That is somebody else, run away. Um, but the first line here really is pretty much what we do. Our whole goal is to make you feel better, make you move better, uh, to get around better, and to hopefully decrease pain, whether it's chronic in nature, uh, acute injuries, we see a little bit of everything. So that's essentially what therapy is. Who are therapists? Here's some great definitions from the uh, American Physical Therapy Association, and they're not biased at all, they just tell it like it is. So we're trained, licensed medical professionals with experience in diagnosing physical abnormalities, restoring physical function, mobility, and maintaining uh, function. You're going to hear that a lot during this today because that really is kind of what we do. Our whole goal is to restore function, whether that's with your walking, with arm, leg, neck, back. That is kind of our whole goal, uh, which is part of what we're going to talk about later and how we kind of differentiate ourselves from some of the other practitioners. Um, we manage conditions. You know, some things are not acute. Some things don't go away. Some things are chronic. And we teach patients how to work through some of those things, what to expect, the process, what it's going to look like in five or ten years. How can we do things today that are going to help you in five or ten years? So that's a big part of the puzzle. 
increasingly today, we're seeing more PTs that are working in some of these fitness and wellness centers, which may not be something you think about. You may think of a personal trainer or athletic trainer, but if you're watching a football game on Saturday or Sunday, there's probably a therapist on the sideline. Uh, you may not know it, and they may not be intricately involved at that time, but they're, they're part of that process, whether it's the orthopedic doctor or the athletic trainer. Um, they're involved in a lot of those settings. So we, we kind of run the gamut as far as where we are and what we do. Just a little background, if anybody has, uh, is, any, is interested in any of the, the history, it began, the first, our organization started in 1921. Uh, Dr. Mary McMillan was the one that created the American Physical Therapy Association. So I guess technically she's kind of credited with starting the foundation. Uh, even prior to that, World War I, there were restoration aids is what they called them. And that kind of set the foundation for physical therapy, occupational therapy. But what we really took off was 40s and 50s with the polio epidemic. Um, I, when I went to school in San Marcos, there was a place called Warm Springs where they treated a lot of polio patients. So that's really where our numbers started to expand. They started to get more consistent with the schooling and the education system. Um, and then from there, it's just kind of grown into to what it is today. So who do we treat? When I started talking about this slide, the, my first instinct was, well, let's just put anyone. Uh, because in all honesty, that's pretty much the case. Now, there's going to be some things like I discussed in our clinic that we may not treat that other clinics will. Um, but when we just talk about therapy, if you just hear that term, I mean, literally, there are therapists that work with newborns. There are therapists that work with people over 100. So it really just runs that gamut. Um, Low-functioning, the high-functioning individuals. You know, we start in the hospitals. We see people that literally can't move, can't get out of bed. And then we progress to your high-level athletes. You know, we treat sports injuries regardless of the sport. So, as I put here, orthopedic, pediatric, neurological conditions. Um, Mitch and I really specialize more in orthopedic type injuries, but there are therapists who all they treat is spinal cord injuries. You know, there's, there's hospitals that are dedicated just to rehabilitation for those sort of things. You know, here in, in Houston's a big one. There's a couple up in Dallas that you're gonna have a physical therapist and literally all they work with is spinal cord injuries. Um, in the East Texas area, it's a little bit different because you see so much different stuff. So you kind of got to know a little bit about anything, but there are specific situations. You know, I, the kids, pediatrics, there are home health companies. That's all they treat is pediatrics. I mean, they'll have therapists, physical and occupational, and that's all they treat is, is little kids. So like I said, it really runs the gamut as far as who we treat. So some things that we generally see just in the field as a, general, as a whole and in, in our clinic non-operatively just any kind of pain neck pain back pain shoulder pain hip pain um, any joint you got we can pretty much work on it one way or the other uh, and if it's not something we deal with i can probably tell you who to go see that's who's the best at it uh, a lot of tendinopathies just wear and tear kind of things um, a few i got listed here plantar fasciitis achilles tendonitis rotator cuff anybody ever heard the term rotator cuff Seen a lot of rotator cuff injuries, uh, both pre and post surgical. Uh, we treat those in, in different capacities. And, you know, I've had people come to me that have had rotator cuff issues for years. And I have some that come that literally, you know, I heard it last week, what's going on. So um, even within just that diagnosis, there's a big continuum as far as where people fall. This is a big one, is just general weakness. I was uh, discussing with Miss Pam a minute ago. I do some work at the hospital still. And the last weekend I worked, I swear everybody I went to see, was pneumonia or you know some sort of deconditioning where they had just got sick got down and now they can't move or they can't get out of bed or they have trouble making it from the bed to the bathroom we treat those sort of things just in different settings so just your general weakness prolonged hospitalization deconditioning kind of things uh, operative hip replacements knee replacements shoulder replacements rotator cuff repairs uh, ACL, which is a big ligament in the knee, you hear a lot. If you watch Saturday and Sunday football, you're always going to hear somebody, oh, they tore ACL, PCL. Uh, Achilles is a big one here lately, it seems. So we see a lot of those post-operatively. Uh, and some non-operatively. We've actually had kids that, you know, they, maybe they're 18, 19 years old, they're not going to play sport anymore, and the doctor says, well, your ACL's torn, but your leg's really strong and you don't have any instability, so we'll actually train them with an ACL-deficient knee. Um, and work on strengthening in that, that regard. Spine surgery, if, if anybody's ever had back pain or neck pain, you may have heard the term spinal fusion or laminectomy. We treat patients postoperatively in those situations. 
Um, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about that in a minute, but it's a lot of just strengthening. I mean, that's pretty much kind of the point of it. Here are some things you may not think about. Anybody ever think about a physical therapist for concussion symptoms? Anybody in here had a concussion and thought, I need therapy? <laughs> no, I mean, that's not something you generally think of. But I guarantee you, once again, if you've turned on the TV on Saturday or Sunday, you've heard something about concussions. It's been huge on TVs and literature and everything for the last year or two. And they're starting to develop these protocols. And forever, if you had a concussion, they'd stick you in a dark room, don't do anything. Well, it's actually coming out of that just a little bit. They want you to move. They want you to do stuff to an extent. Um, I think KLTV had a little write-up about it a few weeks ago where they talked about some of the concussion protocols and things that they're doing. And it's not just rest anymore. So we'll get these kids that come in a week after they've had a concussion and we exercise them. I mean, we do balance drills, we do strength training, we do walking, we do different things. Um, and they're coming to us for a concussion, not a joint-related issue. Uh, the vestibular system, it's a system in your brain that controls your balance. And I would say probably 30% probably of what we see in the clinic is some sort of balance related issue or deconditioning kind of issue. Um, we treat that, I mean, like I said, and even some folks that come in with other things, maybe they have hip pain, but they can't walk without a walker, or they can't walk without a cane. So we're gonna try to treat some of these things while they're in the clinic, depending on the setting. So these are just some things that, now stroke, yeah, you probably think about that one, but it's more of a neurological condition that we see. Um, generally a one-time insult, but these folks have some sort of impairments. They have trouble walking. They have weakness in an arm or leg or something like that. And we treat that pretty regularly. And of course, like I said, the balance dysfunction. So just a few things that I guess, you know, my thought was when I think therapy, I don't generally think about some of these things. But it is actually something that we've treated consistently and, and are starting to see more and more just as, as the injuries become more prevalent. Where do we work? So if you look at this slide, I tried to create it almost like a continuum. So if something happens to you and you go into the hospital, um, outside of your doctor and a nurse and an aide, if you've had an injury or you're weak, you're probably going to see a therapist. Uh, if you have a hip or knee replacement, they're going to get you up that day. They literally come after you've gotten home, I mean, after you've gotten back in the bed within an hour or two, they're going to get you up and you're going to walk. So we start there. Um, and when we graduate physical therapy school, you don't say, well, I want to be a physical therapist in the hospital, or I want to be a physical therapist in home health. You say, I want to be a physical therapist. And then you're going to matriculate into some of these areas. And each therapist is probably going to be a little more proficient in one of these areas. You know, if I work the hospital all the time, well, I'm going to be better at doing stuff in the hospital than I am in an outpatient clinic and vice versa. So if you look at this, You'll see that therapist at the hospital, and then they have even more intense therapy within the hospital. So you're medically stable, but you can't really go home yet. So we got to do something with you. Let's put you in the rehab. So there, you get three hours of therapy a day. You get all the disciplines. They're working on those things you need to do to be able to go home. The next step would be a skilled nursing center. You know, we have nursing homes. They also provide therapy services where you can get strengthening, where you can work on your balance, work on your endurance. From there, once you're able, that's when they send you home and you may get home health therapy. Uh, if anybody's ever had a surgery, a lot of the doctors, post-op knee or hip, they want you to have home health for a week or two before you ever get out and go anywhere. We want to make sure we minimize that risk for infection. So they send therapists out to your house, which is something that Mitch and I do as well. Uh, from there, once you're able, you're no longer dependent upon being in the house, then they'll send you to the outpatient clinic and as I mentioned before, sports teams, fitness facilities, you're starting to see more and more of these places that have some sort of therapy on staff. How are we different? So this is a big one, the big questions I get asked a lot. What do you do that other people do? Or, you know, how are y'all different? The quick answer to that question is there is some overlap. I mean, there's some things that we do that you might see in a chiropractic office. There's some things in their office you might see in our office. But the big thing that I can say what is therapy that generally most other professions are not? And that's exercise. Um, and specifically, skilled exercise or exercise prescription to fix whatever it is you're having the problem, whether it's a pain-related issue um, or improving your function. You know, we're gonna do other things in our clinic. We do some soft tissue work. We do some mobilization techniques. Uh, we may use some traction on a limited basis, but when you come in to see us, 
75% of what we're trying to do is we're going to use exercise to improve your mobility and your function. Whether it's your shoulder, knee, hip, balance, whatever it is, this is kind of our main bread and butter. Um, I, and I'll see some, one thing that always gets me is I'll have patients come in, uh, rotator cuff, for example. Man, I got online and I found these exercises for rotator cuff and I've been doing them and my shoulder's still killing me. And they'll come in and I'm like, well, it's not that your exercises are bad, you're just not doing them right. So we'll make a few tweaks and a few changes and it can really just change things. So when I, I say skilled specific exercise, it's not just that you know certain exercises are for certain things, it's how you perform that exercise. If you're doing it incorrectly, you're just gonna make your problem worse and you're probably gonna go back to the surgeon, he's gonna say, well, it's not better, let's fix it. And that's what ends up happening in a lot of situations. So when I say, you know, when people ask me, what is the big difference? I just say, look, we are trained in exercise. We're trained to spot deficiencies in joint movement. Uh, we're trained to spot abnormal movement patterns that may be the reason why you're having some of those symptoms. So that's where we come in, and that's what we can fix in a lot of situations. All right, so kinetic physical therapy, this is our business. In Gilmer now for a year, as a matter of fact, last January, um, and frankly, everybody here has been so gracious, I and mean, we've, done, we've done very well. We've done better than we anticipated. Um, but like I said, I have a great staff. You've met Mitch already, and, and he's, he's awesome. Uh, Melly that works for us at the front desk, she can pretty much handle anything, any insurance issues. Um, sometimes we get a little overloaded, and next thing you know, she's back there helping us. So she's running around like a chicken with her head cut off, and we're making sure everything goes smoothly. So she's the real boss of the clinic, which is why she's there right now, hopefully holding everything down. But, um, you know, this is, this is partly our dream, partly our baby. Uh, we do have other clinics. I'll kind of, this is one of the, a couple pictures of the inside of our clinic here when we first opened up, but um, we're locally owned. Uh, the original clinic started in Mount Pleasant in 07 as Chambers Physical Therapy. I don't know if anybody knows anything about Mount Pleasant, but um, Chambers Home Health has been there for a long time. They started a little outpatient clinic in 07, and then um, they actually expanded it under Chambers in Mount Vernon in 2015. But then in October of 17, I joined up with the company and we changed everything, changed the name. And there's, I have five partners that we're in with. Um, four of us are therapists. We have one guy that kind of handles the business side of things. But we're all therapists. I mean, the two therapists that we have in Mount Pleasant, you know, they're from the Mount Pleasant area. Mitch and I are kind of from Pittsburgh, Gilmer. We're the only two people, as of right now, that you're gonna see in the Gilmer Clinic. I mean, if you come up there, I'm gonna do your evaluation, and if I don't treat you, Mitch will. Um, you know, our, our big thing is we wanna be accessible. If you need something, let us know. We'll give you our information, our, our numbers. Um, we like the small clinics. It kind of makes it a more intimate situation. I just feel like we're more on top of things. But um, that's kind of the story of our clinics. Like I said, there's three of them right now. Um, and you know we just we want to grow Gilmer as best we can. Um, we hope we get to add staff at some point in time, but we also want to provide good care. And that's kind of our biggest thing. If, if we're not making you better, or at least you know pointing you in the right direction one way or the other, then we're not doing our job. So that's kind of our main goal. Um, in regards to that, where we treat, what we treat, and some treatment techniques. So you know how I explained to you that therapists kind of work in all different environments, right? There's hospitals, outpatients. So Mitch and I primarily, we do outpatient physical therapy and we do home health physical therapy. Um, we mainly treat a lot of operative conditions with the joint replacements, knee replacements. Uh, like I told you, 30% or so of our folks are just general deconditioning, post-op hospitalization, that sort of stuff, just weakness. Um, but we get just a lot of general pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, hip pain, back pain. Um, I'll have folks come in, man, I'm I'm trying to play golf and every time I do, it hurts in my shoulder right here. It's been that way for five years. You know, what do I do? Um, and then what I like to do is, you know, if you come in with a shoulder issue, we're not just gonna look at your shoulder. We're gonna look at your back, we're gonna look at your neck. We're gonna look at kind of the whole picture because sometimes it may be that there's a problem going on somewhere else that's causing that compensation, that's causing you to change how you do things. So we try to take a look at it as a whole, um, kind of what we treat here, joint pain, spinal pain, and then some treatment techniques. This is where I talk a little about the overlap. You know, I still say exercise is our bread and butter. That's what we're good at. If you need it, we got it, and I feel like we're the best at it. But there are other things that we do. You know, we do some manual techniques. Um, if you come in and you got a stiff shoulder, well, I'm probably going to tug and stretch on that joint just a little bit, and then we'll get into the exercise. Um, the vestibular rehab, I talked about the balance issues. You ever heard of dry needling? 
Never? You may have heard of acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dry needling is very similar to acupuncture. Um, with acupuncture, it's based on Chinese meridians, where pretty much, you know, they put in a certain spot to affect areas of the body. With dry needling, we're really taking that needle and we're putting it directly in that trigger point. So if you've got a spot up here that's giving you trouble and it won't release and it's causing you issues with your shoulder, well, I'm going to take that needle and I'm putting it right there to try to get that knot to relax. The needle is pretty much the same as an acupuncture needle. It's kind of the same filament and everything else. Um, the technique is just a little bit different. Okay, so if I put a needle here, I'm, I'm working on this spot. If I put it on in a quad muscle, I'm, I'm working on that quad, hamstring, whatever it is. Um, definitely not our first technique. Some folks when I walk in and say, hey, I'm going to try to put a needle in that muscle and see what it does. They kind of look at me funny. Uh, if they don't run the opposite direction, then um, we, we shut the gate and they have to stay in for a minute so I can talk about it. But um, it's a very effective treatment technique for the patients who need it. Uh, it's not something I use. I probably, I don't know, I do one or two sessions a week. And it's literally a quick five minutes and then we move on to the exercise because it's the same thing. This is what help gets us to be able to do what we need to do, which is the exercises, the stretches, that sort of thing. So if I have to do some manual or use modalities, use heat, ice, and stem to decrease your pain so that I can exercise you like you need to, then that's what I'm gonna do. Um, this SFMA and FMS, these are evaluative techniques where we look at full function. Uh, with that SFMA, you may come in with a back issue, but I'm gonna run you through a, a screen and pretty much look from head to toe. Just a quick, take seven minutes, run you through all, and make sure there's not a, maybe there's a hip or knee issue that's causing your back to hurt. So we kind of look at it from, from different levels. But we pretty much treat outpatient orthopedic injuries, general pain. Um, we do see some strokes, some neurological stuff, but if you got a spinal cord injury, I'm not your person. Um, you know, we don't, we treat, when I say we don't treat kids, we treat kids, but generally with orthopedic issues. I mean, we, many times I'm what, 10, 11, 12 years old, um, but they're usually for knee pain or back pain or hip pain. Um, if it's a kind of a congenital something you've had from birth, um, I, I can tell you where to go. I can make those phone calls and I'll get you set up. But that is not our cup of tea. Um, but either way, this, this is kind of some of the stuff we do and, and how we're a little bit different. So this is us again, like I said. I'm uh, left the file up there. But anyway, I'm Zane, the physical therapist. I'll, I'll met, you know, let you introduce Mitch and then Melly, our office coordinator. Here's some of our information as far as where we are. We're uh, the old Workforce Solutions building. Anybody know where that is? Mm -hmm. That's us. We're right there off of 154. But um, so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much us. That's what therapy does, and especially in my eyes, I guess uh, it's a little different in some places. But anybody have any big questions or statements, concerns? Do you work with? I mean, like. Or Tyler, or Tyler, I mean. Yes, sir. So, and, and I'll kind of piggyback that. We require a physician referral for you to come see us. Um, in the state of Texas, I do not have direct access. Now, I have limited direct access, which means I can evaluate you, but I can't treat you without a referral from a doctor. So, with that being said, it's just better, you know, if you just go see him. Now, that can be any doctor. It can be in the orthopedics out of Tyler Longview or anywhere else. Your primary care, anybody can send me a referral as long as they're a physician. Actually, chiropractors can send me referrals, and I we send some back and forth. You know, if I have somebody that got a neck issue that I'm not, I don't adjust necks, man. But I know you need it, so let's point you in that direction. Let them do that. Come on back, we'll work on the you know stabilization type stuff. Um, but yeah, we've worked. I mean, and it's it's growing. Um, of course, us being in Longview, you know, some of the, the doctors down there knew us, so they would send us patients if they got an Usher County kid. We've literally worked with Union Hill, uh, Diana, Harmony, Gilmer, Union Grove. We've, we've probably had kids from just about all the surrounding schools since we've been here for about a year. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to you. You get to go wherever you want to go. But yeah, most of, the, most of the orthopedic doctors around here have our information, and they generally know we're here. What about cardio as well? I mean, cardiologists. So, yes and no. I do not, we do not have cardiac therapy specifically. Uh, for instance, where we used to work at the Institute, they had a cardiac therapy rehab where you come in, they connect you to all the monitors, they observe it. No, we do not do that. If you're out past that point and you're still needing some strengthening or function or something like that, yes, we can help you in that regard. We can still monitor your heart rate. I just don't have the lead systems actually set up and watch your rhythms and crash heart and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I can definitely tell you who you go see and where if you need that information too. I have to vouch 
I was bound and out, and they do good, but then they, they kick you out. <laughs> well, you're welcome to come back. <laughs> I, I did that yeah, your exercise that you gave it. <laughs> on, the, on the floor before, before I went to bed last night. Were you able to get up by yourself? All on my side. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, there you go. There's a function right there. Yes, sir. Y'all take Medicare or some of the Medicare Advantage plans? Yes, so the answer to that question is we accept all insurances that I know of unless somebody brings something random that we've just never seen. Now, we, the only one we are not in network with is Aetna. Uh, and I know it kind of stinks because that's one a lot of the schools use. Um, however, here's what I've done with that because I've had some folks that come in with Aetna insurance and what they have to pay to go to an in-network provider is the same amount they have to pay me for out-of-network. So in that situation, I tell them to call me, give me your insurance, let me run it, and I'll give you that option. Um, I've had some, it's like $5 difference. So most of them don't want to drive to Longview to save five bucks. So in that situation, if you have Aetna, I just tell them, look, well, well but if you have it, call me, let us run it, and if it works, I'll let you make that decision. Um, but everything else we take, Medicare, Humana, Blue Cross. Um, UNC. Sir? UNC. Yes, sir. The only ones, <clears throat> We had one that was a, and we're in network, we take Medicaid patients as well. We're in network with Medicaid, and then we had a patient that came in with a Cigna Medicaid, which we're in network with Medicaid, and we're in network with Cigna, but for some reason, we weren't in network with Cigna Medicaid, but we are now. So I, like I said, every once in a while, we'll find one that just, I don't, I don't know how it happens, but, but like I said, I mean, we accept them all. Just give us a phone call, and Melody can run it in about five minutes and tell you exactly what you owe, what your deductibles are, and all those sort of things. So, How'd you come up with the name? Kinetic Physical Therapy. So one of my partners was actually my good buddy in physical therapy school, and he is always like kinetic, because kinetic just means movement. And me and him talked about clinics in the past, and he kept saying kinetic, kinetic, kinetic. And then we got in a group, and it's a little, well, you may know, it's kind of hard to come up with a name for some of these, for business. So we, you know, beat around a few things, and we wanted something that was kind of quick, easy to remember. I mean, kinetic, you say kinetic PT, it's pretty easy. And um, that was just the one that stuck, so to speak. We had about three or four, and we picked that one out of the pot, and here we go. <laughs> yes, a new place on East Loop in Longview. What's that going to be? East Loop. You're talking about the rehab hospital out there by, okay. I don't remember the name of it. Before you get out by. It's a rehab hospital. So in that continuum that I discussed, there's hospital and there's a rehab hospital. So for instance, you go to Good Shepherd and they want to say, we're going to put you in Good Shepherd Rehab. Well, at Good Shepherd, it's down the hall. So literally you go from the acute to the rehab. But there are a lot of groups that just have independent rehab hospitals. So from that, Good Shepherd, would you say, I want to go to, I can't remember the name, it hadn't opened yet, but they're in the middle of all the construction. You would say, I want to go there for my rehab. Well, they would just discharge you there you stay in house in a rehab hospital because you get three hours of therapy a day. You stay in house. You stay in house. Like you would go there as an inpatient patient. You got a room. Uh, they have a gym set up, and then I know at the hospital, you know, they'll come get you every thirty minutes. You go for therapy, and you go back for an hour and rest, and you go back for thirty minutes and do exercise. But you're on site, and it's it's five to seven days a week, depending on you know what they approve you for. <laughs> yes, sir. There's something sometimes happens to somebody's shoulder where it gets a little scar tissue or something like described it. You can't raise it up without severe pain. Yeah. So we're all that. He's a capsulitis frozen shoulder. Yeah, well, In most situations, assuming that's the problem. Well, whatever the name of that happened to me. And the therapist said, yeah, you got to just work that thing with a little pulley up. Pull it up and it finally just worked all out. Yeah. You see very many of them. Yes, and they come in waves. I swear, we'll get like three or four at a time in like a week or two. And then I won't see one for a month and then they'll all come right back. So I've got those patients, but more. Um, so yes, we see that pretty, pretty readily. Um, a lot of that, I'll be honest with you, is just stretching and exercise. We do, sometimes I'll do some of the dry needling. They've actually done a few studies about how that can help release some of that. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of stretching, a lot of exercise, a lot of manual mobility work. Yeah, that thing was, that thing was so bad, I thought it was never going to get well. Yeah, they hurt. They hurt a lot. It depends, and it depends on when you catch it. If you come to me and it's down like this, you got a long road to hope. Uh, but some come and it's you know stuck right here. We well, can usually get those fixed pretty quick. 
All right. Hey, thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. I want to visit with you, though.